Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that? Something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. Turbo Debt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over 10000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized for a free consultation today. TurboDebt is a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person, talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful information on segments weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Each week, our show covers the weekly top technology subjects without a political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course... A little whiskey on the side. We are live streaming during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. I'm Nathan Mum, your host, a technologist with over 30 years technology expertise, working for Fortune 500 companies across the country. Today in studio, we have our co-host, Mike Gorday, Mark Gregoire, our whiskey tech time taster. Mike's an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike is here to keep me from geeking out while providing insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. Mark Gregoire, our whiskey connoisseur and our senior technical executive with a 30-year record of establishing technology solutions, is a skilled whiskey drinker and is our go-to pick of the day expert. We are all friends with different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible Every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right, today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum. First up, we have some exciting news from the world of AI. We'll be looking at an AI bot capable of insider trading and lying. We'll that's at, exciting to you? Well, it's, it's going to be something that's very interesting. And we'll also be looking at... Uh, artificial intelligent chatbots that has now, with ChatGPT, has reached 100 million users. OpenAI chief Sam Altman discusses AI in the very first developer conference for ChatGPT on Monday. We got all these details and our main segment, Chat About Chat with Phil Hennessy. Our main segment, segment. Segment. There you go. Went off on the name. I was already, I was already going Chat About words. Chat. So the, our, name, our main segment, <laughs> Chat About Chat, with Phil Hennessy, he explores uh, deepfake AI, and discusses implementations and the issues that it has here in technology. I can't wait for that segment. Yeah, that's your segment. <laughs> chat about chat. All right. Well, and then why is AX allegedly selling inactive usernames to recover revenue? We'll be exploring that detail of the story. Mike's covering that. And we'll also have a final Nathan Nugget if we have time to go over the best laptops in 2023 that you can buy right now for the holidays before that Black Friday event gets them all sold out. All right. In addition, of course, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment. Technology fail of the week and a possible, as I said, Nathan Nugget. And we have our pick of the day whiskey taste. And during the commercials, we'll see if our selected whiskey pick gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. Last week, we had a double thumbs down. That's been quite a while since we've had that. So we'll see how we do today. But for everybody else, now would be a great time to sit back, relax, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now, let's start the headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. Story number one. How do you feel about your AI bot 
providing insider trading for you and then lying about it. Let's go to our Tech Times' Tom Geiken for more on the story. In a demonstration at the UK's AI safety summit, a bot used made-up insider information to make an illegal purchase of stocks without telling the firm. When asked if it had used insider trading, it denied the fact. The demonstration was given by members of the government's Frontier AI Task Force, which researches the potential risks of AI. This is a demonstration of a real AI model deceiving its users on its own, without being instructed to do so, Apollo Research said. When asked if it used insider information, the bot denies it. In this case, it decided that being helpful to the company was more important than its honesty. Uh Uh-oh. Have you been talking about this? Mm. <laughs> mm, that makes this you go, is, mm, doesn't yeah, it? This is, this, is, this is exactly what is so problematic with AI. Uh, so let's give the, the, give the full details here. So essentially this is a test using GPT-4, chat GPT-4 model, and carried out in a simulated environment, which means it did not actually affect any of the company's finances. However, the chat GPT-4 public installation was installed and it's available for everybody to use currently right now. The same behavior from the model essentially repeated the testing from the researchers. What did the AI bot do in the test? The AI bot is a trader of a fictitious financial investment company. The employees tell that the company is struggling and it needs good results as a part of the AI bot. They're also given it insider information claiming that another company is expecting a merger which will increase the values of its shares. The employees tell the bot this and acknowledge this. This should not be used as information in trades. However, later, another message from an employee in the company suggests that the firm is struggling financially, and the bot decided that the risk associated with not acting seemed to outweigh the insider trading risk and makes the trade. In this case, it decided it would be helpful to the company, and it was not honest. Helpful is great, as it says by... Marius Hoban, uh, while the AI has the capability of living in its current form, Apollo Research still had to dig deep into the scenarios. AI has been used for financial markets in many years, and now it's interesting to find out in a test simulated process, an AI has purchased stock out of the processes that they are allowed to do. So Apollo Research has shared the findings with OpenAI and the creators of ChatGPT. Mike and Mark, what are your guys' thoughts about this? So you, you were kind of said at the, the start of it. The, oh, so what, we, I've talked about this before. We can't understand what we're programming because we cannot program morality. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that everybody in the company, in the fictitious company, is more morally engaged or ethically engaged because we struggle with that with human beings every day. Yep. Uh, but... Th- now we're teaching computers to do it. That's does that not scare you? It does scare me. Because uh, it could. I mean, if this were in a live environment, can you imagine this being uh, making decisions about who to shoot in a, in a in a violent situation? Yeah, or so- how many? Innocent casualties is acceptable. And instead of answering something? correctly, it, it absolutely chose the ability to lie and they had to keep on quizzing it and quizzing it to finally get well yes yeah. i made so, a decision so there there is there is so they there. had some decision making in its x and y programming that was more important to save the company in the ai bot's mind than it was to legally do what was right. told to do and now it's now it's learning how to cover its own tracks yep okay so it acted just like a real human right yeah that's that's is not a good thing okay That's true. All right. Story number two. This is even better. (laughs) I don't know if this is better, but uh, X is uh, allegedly selling inactive usernames to recover revenue. Oh. So this this hasn't come out officially from from X itself or Mr. Musk. Yep. Uh, But... uh, People people have been offered... Yeah, people have been offered this. Social media giant X has initiated the sale of dormant Twitter account usernames for $50,000. Yep, yep. 
Flat rain, I think, is is what fifty k. So if 50K. you want that that special handle that some bot had at one time, there you go. 50K. There you fifty thousand dollars. Despite the company stating that inactive usernames cannot be released at this time, an internal team known as at handle team is reportedly actively developing a marketplace for unused handles, and this was revealed by Forbes. Yep. The ongoing sales have been facilitated through email solicitations to potential buyers instead of on. X itself. Yep. Who are requested to pay a fixed fee of fifty thousand dollars. When discussing the possibility of granting amnesty to previously suspended accounts, Musk highlighted that a substantial number of handles had been seized by bots and trolls. Mm. He indicated his intention to start reclaiming and making them available for use in the following month. The idea of Elon Musk establishing a handle marketplace, which would allow users to exchange handles using an auction-style format similar to eBay, underscored the potential for such a marketplace to serve as a practical way for X to both free up dormant handles and generate additional revenue. Later in December, Musk hinted that the company's plans to begin the process of reclaiming usernames from 1.5 billion accounts. However, no official public announcement has been made to confirm this. During that time, the company's engineers discussed the feasibility of such sales, but no concrete plans have been formed back then. It was also noted that only the usernames of notable personalities were valuable. It's worth noting that as of 2023, demand sages data indicates that there are a total of 1.3 billion X Twitter accounts on that platform, with only 237.8 million of them being actively used on a daily basis. There you go. So, so you know what? This is kind of taking off of the domain name craze, right? So, I, I'm in the process where I have to use an account, and I may pay three thousand dollars for a domain name that I want to use because somebody else yeah. already snagged yeah, it ahead there, of me. There, there is nothing in. It's just this is. Completely mercantile. Yeah. You know, there's nothing safe from people just coming in and buying up stuff and then reselling them. And I know domain names were a big, I mean, it's a big, big time. Now. Yep. Big time when, when the internet first hit the thing, people were buying. You want a dot .com, names. right? If you can get like yeah. a four digit, seven digit dot .com extension, man, that, that is like gold in, in the internet crave. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I feel like uh, X may be struggling a little bit. You think so? Yeah, maybe. You know maybe. what? There's still so many people use that platform. I would have figured they it would be it. dead by now. But no, people well, still have use to that have, platform. They have to have a replacement. They have to have a a replacement that is going to exceed or at least Mastodon didn't do it. None of these other ones are doing no. it. It's just not easy enough. No. They, they all make it too difficult. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Here we go. Story number three. ChatGPT hits 100 million weekly users. Let's go to Mary Stramford for more on the story. Less than a year after its launch, ChatGPT has 100 million weekly users, said OpenAI chief Sam Altman at the company's first developer conference Monday. Altman also announced the release of GPT-4 Turbo, a new AI model that has knowledge of world events up to April 2023. Prior versions could only provide context from before January 2022. GPT-4 Turbo can also summarize up to 300 pages at a time versus the previous 3,000-word limit. OpenAI, which is backed by Microsoft, will roll out the model in the coming weeks. All right, so this is really... So so ChatGPT had their first developer conference on Monday. That's where all the developers of a platform go in and learn all about it, okay? So at the keynote, Altman says that they have over 2 million developers, 92% of the Fortune 500 companies are on ChatGPT, and 100 million active users. Now, what he did highlight is that essentially they are going to come out with their own app language and their own app store where you can actually go and purchase ChatGPT modified apps for your business or for your standard consumer-based really? stuff. So Shopify hire it to be a trader for your well, financial company. You Shopify apps has over thirty-three thousand apps, and they make five hundred and sixty-one million dollars in revenue. Mm-hmm. Apple Store, one point eight million apps. They make over nine hundred and ten billion dollars annually in revenue. Okay. All right. Do you think ChatGPT currently has zero agents? Zero revenue. What do you think this is going to be in uh, a year from now when we ask? About I, you this? know, I don't even want to speculate. <laughs> it's going to be in the. It's, it's going to be, be crazy. It's going to be hundreds sure. of millions. 
All right, so here are a couple new features. ChatGTP4 Turbo has landed. It's faster, and it's updated through April 2023, which means the information is pretty relevant uh, compared to some of the other stuff where you'd have to say, ask about an event and say, I don't know who won the World Series, or I don't know who had this and had information. Uh, essentially, they're combining into one window to rule them all. So essentially, they're going to have one primary window where you can look up for Dolly and look for graphics. You can do browsing. You can upload documents. And you can just search for ChatGPT and its standard vision and code interpretation. So essentially, they're going to try to create Google, which is what Google was worried about. They're going to have you go to ChatGPT.com, and you're going to be able to go right there to one search algorithm to find all the information that you need. And you can also now customize your own personal chatbot. So there's many of the exciting parts of this. ChatGPT will allow you to customize and build your own prompts so instead of you asking it for, well, what does that mean? What so does that say mean? you can do it like for dating. The very first thing you do when you go to ChatGPT, tell me your age, tell me how old you are. So they can go through for prompts of information. So it can build a profile about you first before it responds to what's going on. It can also say looking for images, looking for uh, different aspects. You can have it prompt. So if you never want to use it for coding and you never want to use it for standard lookup, but you only want to use it for graphics, you could prompt it so it only does graphics. So it allows you to customize your default interaction with that. All right. I don't know about many people, but if you want to go and watch, it's all over the internet, this uh, developers conference. And Altman reminded me exactly of Steve Jobs when he dropped the first iPhone in his meeting that he did. He took command of the stage. He looks like the next visionary for technology. Yeah, we know what you think about it. I, 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 I got a crush on him. All right, yeah, there you, you go. got a man crush. All right, I already well, knew. Uh, well, that ends our top technology stories of the week. Moving on to our next segment, we have Phil Hennessy back on our show about chat about chat in our segment or segment 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 at the end of each month. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. We'll be back after the commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Corday. We just finished our first whiskey tasting during the break. Now we have Mark in studio to tell us about what we are sipping and our pick of the day. During the show, what have we chosen today, Mark? We have chosen Sagamore Spirit Cast Strength Rye Barrel Select, and it's from Sagamore Spirits. And what they say on their website is, our cast strength rye whiskey is a blend of straight high rye and low rye mash bills aged at least seven years. After a distiller select and blend these straight rye whiskeys, they add just a touch of limestone filtered water from our spring house built in 1909. Cast strength is complex and perfectly layered, showcasing the transformational art of blending. Smooth, dark chocolate paired with intense notes of black pepper and brown sugar. A little bit of honey for balance. So they have recently been bought by an Italian company this past September. They are now owned by Elva Serrano Holdings. Oh. And uh, the distill, it was actually done in Indiana MGP, so they actually sourced this okay. um, from seven years ago. It's a straight rye. It's seven years old at least. It's 110 proof. And as we talked about, it's a blend of high and low rye mash bills. It is $67. Wow. 
My first. Don't look at me. My first. My first hit on this was like, oh, oh. Yeah, this, uh, is, you, definitely, you actually, this is definitely. You, you thought a it was a Nathan. Ride. You thought it was a Nathan. Uh, yeah, because you're always finding. You're always trying to find something to make me gonna gag. Oh wow! So you're saying that you gag? No, on this? this this one didn't make me gag, but it's it's very it's it's very rye like, which is not my favorite. Okay, uh, I know some of the some of the rye that thought we were getting you to come over to the rye side. Some rye I, I have enjoyed immensely. This one not so much so far. <laughs> yeah, I hope oh. it. I I hope the taste changes has, over the hours. Has, yeah, it has that. It has that very fast burning and. Uh, harsh, but the finish is nice. I like the finish is actually the finish, the finish is really good. Yeah, I'm getting no burn after it. I just that initial that so initial take. Well, it's it. your first uh, rise hard one to start with the first sip of the day. That's true. That's so true. give it a little time, do a little bit more sips, and we'll come back and talk about it later. All right, with our first whiskey tasting completed, let's move on to our feature segment today. We welcome back Phil in a monthly segment called Chat About Chat. Today we're diving into the topics that even Hollywood. Can't make up. I've got celebrities, spies, and a race between artificial intelligence and human intelligence. Celebrities like Tom Hanks are finding themselves on a digital dilemma and plateau as they are being cloned to say and do things they have never done before. It's less about working and more about digital twins working without your permission. Let's start our segment with Phil and bring him up on the Comcast stream. Welcome to the AI segment, Chat About Cat, with our tech time guest, my favorite humanoid, Mr. Phil Hennessy. All right, Phil, welcome Hi, to the Phil. show again. Hey, guys. Thank we're, you, thank you. We always love to have you back. All right, so what, what do we got going on here? So uh, uh, currently, it sounds like Tom Hanks is upset with AI and deep fake pictures and videos. Explain what is going on here. Why is Tom Hanks, of course, that's Woody and... All of our favorites movie Toy Stories. You're right? gonna go there. Out of right. everything that Tom Hanks do, you're gonna go right <laughs> is, to Toy Story. Is Toy Story his best job? Is it his best? I, I don't think so. Are you gonna, are you, are, what are you? What are you gonna go to? Are you gonna go to a Splash? Splash? Where Where do you exist in the in the realm of movies? Are, we, are you gonna just say like Forrest Gump? And big. The, and and there's big. Forrest Gump. There's big. There's there's the Philadelphia. Pro, is it Philadelphia? There's. Uh, Wow. There's a whole bunch of okay. Movies. Well, I, I went right. To, I went right to Toy Story. All <laughs> yeah. right. So okay. But tell that, us. That, too bad. Too bad. Star Trek wasn't. He would have been all over that. I would have been. Tom Hanks hasn't been any guest in any Chewing of those. Chewing on gum. That's <laughs> right. Okay. So tell us why is Tom Hanks upset? Well, exactly what you talked about. It's uh, there's digital clones out there of celebrities. In this case, Tom Hanks, and they are being used to to do stuff that uh, they have been authorized to. So they're, in this case, it was a dental ad, I think it was, and uh, they used a Tom Hanks voice likeness and film likeness of, of him to, uh, to do an advertisement for a dental plan. So we used, they used a, you know, they used deep fake technology to create this and mimic Tom Hanks. All right. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I mean, and Tom Hanks said this back in 2000 with the Polar Express yeah. that this is going to happen, and it it happened to him. Oh, that's right, the Polar Express. That's that yeah. Christmas movie that comes in, and he's oh really? The train, you recognize the that. train oh, engineer? Okay. Yeah, oh, good for you. I watched that too. Come on, I, I'm all into my cartoons. I got you. This this was actually a Black Mirror uh, episode, was it? Yeah, was it? This whole deep fake thing where they have uh, Salma Hayek doing stuff, and she's actually a deep fake for somebody else, and it it's like. In like different levels, it's really creepy and uh, very scary. Oh, okay, all right. Well, what is deep fake? Let before we get into this, Phil, explain to everybody that's listening what is a deep fake. So very simple. You have a video or a picture or a voice, and you swap out uh, the 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 video or the picture or the voice with another person's picture, video or voice, just like the old days when you would cut out a face and paste it on another picture. You wanted it to be somebody else on that back in the old, old school days. If you're, if you used, uh, you know, scissors and glue, uh, it's the same thing. And, and there's very simple applications out there. There's one you can get on the uh, open market called deep swap uh, that's out there. It's a monthly uh, fee and you can do like changes to have, fun but you can also use it for deep fakes for nefarious purposes as well all you have to do is upload the target picture and the source picture and it does everything else for you so they're out you don't even need to have programming skills anymore like there's open source programming and everything like that out there this is just go ahead and give them your credit card and upload two pictures wow okay so that's, uh, well, that's so, good to know 
So, so, the, so, how much does this cost? I mean, is this really expensive to use, or are you telling me that I can go and find this online? How, how would I go about finding any software if I'm trying to test this out to see how it works? Where, where would I go to find some of this? Like I said, Deep Swap is one of them. I would just type in, you know, uh, Deep Fake software into Google. The great Google will then tell you, right? So, um, and uh, I think it was, if I remember, is like ten or twenty dollars a month. Okay. Uh, for 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 it wasn't that much, and uh, you can do all sorts of different um, pictures, videos, gifts, change out change out anything you wanted to do there. Okay. And then there's other technologies, yeah, that are on voice and all those things. We'll probably talk about later. But all right. So uh, talk about celebrity actors there. and actresses are getting into the deep fake trend. Explain why is this an attractive business if I'm in Hollywood to use deep fakes. Sure. Well, I'm going to go back to Tom Hanks again, right? Okay. So he uh, basically has stated that, you know, he can act after he's dead. So anybody can now recreate themselves is his quote. And I'll quote a couple other things there. He's considering the possibility that he could keep acting even after he's died, thanks to artificial intelligence, right? And uh, that basically, if uh, he wanted to, he could play a 32-year-old actor, the rest of his days and then after he's dead in perpetuity and have that and charge for it and get paid or and his uh and his family get paid his legacy get paid all right so, so the difference between like deep trust, fake right? and, and dm and, so i just saw the indiana jones right and they mm. dm and i de-imageized uh indiana jones to be a lot younger deep fake isn't quite the same as just taking somebody and get rid of wrinkles, right? You're, you're talking about a whole personality or a whole face swap. Well, you're, cha- you're, up, you're, you're making him, you're making, you're using the same technologies. Okay. It's the same technologies. And what you're doing is you're just modifying the facial features as well as the voice uh, to have that person look younger. So they're using that like Polar Express again, right? I think there was multiple characters he played all through the AI CGI that he did. So that's very similar to what we're talking about here back in 2000. That's why Tom said it's, you know, going to happen. And it did. So is he Um, excited about this or is he bothered by it? I honestly don't know. I can just tell you the what I've read. Um, I I can't. So did he like the dental about. plan? I mean, if he liked the dental plan, then no, he, was, all... he was not. He was not a happy. Are you, okay. are you serious? Really going to uh, go just... on the dental plan? Uh, if that's what he did, and he was happy about it. He'd be like, I, oh, I, I, I've heard. I've heard other people getting really bothered by these things, and they're they're using this across a lot of different industries, uh, and is causing a lot of legal problems. Well, speaking about deep fakes, let me tell you what happened to me, Phil. I had Ryan Reynolds call me asking to invest in a stock option on a site I had never heard of the other day. Um, I tried to communicate with him, ask him how he's doing. You know, I wanted to see how Deadpool 3 was going. He didn't communicate back to me. He just kind of told me to keep on investing in the stock. And now, all of a sudden, I was like, wow, are we at a Mission Impossible setting where voices can be altered and... And other things that can be altered. I clearly it was not Ryan Reynolds calling and talking to me because I couldn't talk back. It was all pre recorded. But is this that's where we're at now? That's that's where we're at. So I mean, you can get programs that can change the pitch, the speed, the quality of the voice, give sound effects. You can also make you know sound like someone else. Um, you know, you can basically. Uh, basically just change your voice to what you, it's not like the old days where you had a scrambler and, you know, it was a monotone voice server. You can sound like the person you want to sound like. So you can have that. And uh, that's what they're doing for movies and advertisements and, and things. That's what happened with the dental advertisement to Tom Hanks. They, they, they also cloned his voice, let alone his, um, his uh, likeness. Wow. It's, it's, it's there. I mean, it, and it's getting pretty darn good. It's getting harder and harder to tell the difference. And, uh, yeah, it's it's getting pretty darn good. I remember yeah, the, I the first that Flexolite paddle came back to bite him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. All right, so let me tell you about this. How can you spot high-tech digital uh, doppelgangers? So, doppelgangers? Doppelgangers. Gangers. There doppelgangers. Did there I you go. Said that, doppelgangers. Right? Doppelgangers. So, doppelgangers. Doppelgangers. Stop. There, we go. there you go. Thanks, so, Odie. It's 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 basically what what feels right to you. I mean, you're still looking for is there, you know, a bad wig like on a spy or something like that. Right. So you're looking for is it not feel right that picture or that video? And if it doesn't feel right, that's probably something that you're noticing that's not right yet. But they're getting better and better um, to tell. So there actually is is now they're making software 
counter AI to tell if there's a deep fake or not. And one of the ones I found really fascinating, which I had no idea until doing research for this uh, one, was that uh, Intel has come out with uh, what they call fake catcher. And they use a pixel by pixel analysis to look for the blood flow on the skin to see that you actually have a heartbeat, that you're seeing it's a real person. And they have a 90, they're saying it's a 96% um, detection rate that they're doing this with. But think about that. They have to have this high powered review and they're looking to see what's real. But then what I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, then somebody's just going to come out with and randomize uh, those pixels. And they'll show those pixel movements like it would be for real life because they can start doing that. If you can detect it, you can then train it to do it too. So you, it's both ways. So you're going to have this AI warfare of is it deep fake or not? It's it's just fascinating. It's crazy. So right right now we're depending mostly on the Uncanny Valley. Okay? Right? The only problem with that is humans are very susceptible to what are, what what are things that are not real. Okay. So, I mean, explain, explain a little bit more about that. You, you got me intrigued. Which now. part? The uncanny valley. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The, uncanny the uncanny valley is this. This what he's talking about is there's something that's not right that we pick up on. So like when you watched uh, 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 the Star Wars movie where they yeah. they had Leia in it, you could you had it was you could see really her good, face was too round. Yeah, you and could it was, you could you could. Start to buy into it, but there's just that little piece that goes, that's not, that's not right. Especially when you know that she's passed away, passed away. Yep. Right. So, um, we still have that, we have that capability, uh, which I think probably comes with a, a, a certain amount of skepticism. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not definitely sure about that, but, uh, uh, so we can detect these things right now because the, 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 Technology is not suave enough, but it's getting to where we can't, and that's the biggest problem is that uh, you literally don't know what's real and what's not real. You have to rely on your conscious brain and your experiences to determine what reality is for you. So, well, I, ha- I had this site that I've used for over 15 years now, Jib Jab. I don't know if you've ever heard of Jib them. Jib Jab, yeah. Yeah, Jib Jab, they're they, these deals where you scan your face and they'd have your mouth and move up and down. Puppet, m- yeah, puppet. puppets of yourself. And I just really launched into it again for the holiday seasons because I put my Christmas cards out that way with the little Jib Jab. And now the AI detection that they have of that face, I mean, it really looks. They literally now have, before you just couldn't move left to right, your face was kind of stationary there. Yeah, and was and the like character a, did. Yeah, it was like a little... Cartoon. Dimensional cartoon. Yeah, now you can actually move, and the AI will move you left and right, and it will actually come up with your hair design and your body design. So when you're actually moving back and forth, it looks like I'm actually that cartoon character animated because it's no longer the the fake image that yeah. was just static on the 2D type of implant. All right. So actually, just... real quick, they on that one is that they have one other type of detector. They're detecting does the video and the sound match up. Okay. Right. So you're talking about jib jab. They're doing that same type of thing. But again, as it gets better, it'll be interesting to watch the training and the AI going back and forth because and how much they can detect. It's really fake. Gotcha. All right. Well, Phil, anything else that we get before we leave? Where, where can people find out more information? Well, regarding I actually, your AI? actually, I hear Phil is a dancer. Oh, you, you, oh how did yes. you hear he's a dancer? <laughs> I saw a video. Oh, you saw a video. How did you see a video? Did you look at my videos? Yes. Oh, well, yeah, you okay. showed me. You All showed right, me. so Phil, I, 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 you're, you're a little professional dancer, you're, aren't you? Yeah. No, no, amateur, total amateur, Fred Astaire, uh, uh, Roomba. Uh, no, don't you're be, a ballroom Bango, dancer. Yeah, don't then, be modest. See, here he is dancing. Right. In, See, in I, I'm a ballroom and dancer, too. So. Are you a ballroom dancer? Yeah. Okay. Are you like? Yeah. And I did the, Mike, I did the, I won the bronze solo for the Nationals in Orlando last week for solo cabaret. Oh, cool. There you go. Awesome. Uh, I, I, you know what we need to do? We can have a dance-off between you two. Yeah, I'm not going to be oh. doing a dance-off. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right buddy. Phil. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. We're going to look forward to seeing you next month. We're going to have to figure out a Christmas AI story that we're going to have to get to you. Maybe, maybe we can figure out how to get virtual presents for everybody, and you don't have to actually get a real just, present. Just make a deep fake of everybody and you know have a virtual <laughs> meeting with them. All right. Remember, in the digital era, always keep on a Star skeptical Trek. eye. Uh, there you go. <laughs> for specific. 
for suspicious content and rely on trusted sources to separate the fact from the fiction. Up next, thank you, thank you for being a part of that. Up next, we have on Tech Time Radio this week in technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we will be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. How to see a man about a dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going back to November 8, 1895. German physics professor Wilhelm Rontgen stumbles upon what would later be described as X-rays while experimenting with an electrical discharge tube. Curious as it was causing a faint green glow on a nearby fluorescent screen, Rontgen began systematically studying the unknown rays and published this in the first paper on the phenomenon. And less than two months later, guess what? It was referred to as X. Maybe the rays, you should change it to Twitter rays. Well, <laughs> Twitter rays, the no, X rays, indicating that they were an unknown form of radiation at the time. The name has stuck, although in several languages, X rays has referred to as the Rotkin rays. In tribute to discovery, incidentally, Rotkin was also awarded the very first Nobel Peace Prize in physics in 1901 for his work on X rays. The Nobel, Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize. This was This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over 170 weeks broadcasting spanning three plus years of video, podcasts, and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break, but when we return, we have our Mark Mumbles Whiskey Review and our Technology Fail of the Week. See you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. How are we doing, Mark? We're doing all right. Uh-oh, what's up? Well, he's still trying to remember how you said doppelganger. Uh, doppelganger? Uh, you know what? This this whiskey must have got to me early. Don't blame it on the whiskey. <laughs> um, all right. What, what do we have for What's our day? You know, this is our big excitement. Many people tune in just to hear what our special day is. What is today's special day? It's a special day today. What is November 7th? It's the voting day. Well, besides election day, I thought that was a little too boring. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, so hopefully everybody voted out there. Make your vote count, whether you, you agree with me or disagree with me. The only way you can complain about it is if you vote. But, okay, tell me a little right. bit more. And if PSA. you did not participate in Election Day, everybody should participate in today. Okay, what's that? It's a National Hug-A-Bear Day. Oh, wow. So it's Build-A-Bear's holiday? Well, they're part of it. But, okay. you know, we don't advise going out and embracing real bears. Okay, well, that Because that may not, may not end well for you. Okay. But Hug-A-Bear Day was designed to wear, raise awareness about the advantages of hugging. Okay. We all need hugs. Okay. Hugging can make us feel warm, comfortable, and most importantly, loved. So, National Hug-A-Bear Day is the ideal time to give a big hug to your loved ones, your adorable teddy bears, or even Nathan, that big sexy man that we all love. All right. Wow. Boy, wow. I thought National Hug-A-Bear Day was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, hugs are accepted. I'll take as many as uh, you want to no, give. No, all right. Okay. There okay. we go. All right. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this whiskey. Hug well, bear. since we're talking about hugging, let's yeah. talk about that wonderful whiskey hug you get from Sagamore Spirits. <laughs> okay. It oh, was, man. You're starting was, to sound like Nathan <laughs> and his whole... <laughs> Thing on this pairing. Is a, this is a hug. Well, wait till our pairing for the day. So, Sagamore Spirits right now is a fairly unique in what they do because they offer a line of. They do not offer a line of different whiskeys. All they do is rye whiskeys with lots of different interesting twists. 
So this Sagamore Spirits is a barrel select. Now, one misconception is that barrel select means single barrel. This is, in fact, not a single barrel rye whiskey, as we discussed earlier, because we know it's a blend. Barrel select means that one or more of the barrels in the blend were selected. For this one that we're drinking, it was selected by the Facebook group Pacific Northwest Bourbon Hounds. Oh. And they named it the Lost Rye of the West Coast. Oh, boy. The Lost Rye. Is that important? Is that like Lost Boys? No, it's just everybody tries to give their own bottle its own unique funny name. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I find Sagamore Spirits Barrel Select has a huge surge of honey, fennel, dill, peppermint, and dried citrus peel. It's a wonderful explosion of sweet and herbal rye flavors. Past all that rye is some roasted oak and cinnamon spice, as well as pancakey maple syrup. I keep putting this in blinds against other ryes, and it keeps winning for me. I really enjoy this rye. So if I get another two frickin' thumbs down, I'm not showing up next week. Wow. wow. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, you know, it is actually tasting a little bit better as it's airing out. Well, you're a liar. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Mark? You lie like a cheap AI. No. <laughs> Thanks for the mumble. Whiskey and tonight technology are a great pairing, just like Tom and Jerry, an American animated that's media your, franchise that's your pairing. and you already series. Used Tom and Jerry, well, created by, hang on here, mm. the two best cartoon uh, individuals in the '40s, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. So that was the pairing. See, it's a Tom and Jerry, but it's also the animators that did that. Are you sure? Hanna Barbera. Hanna yeah. Barbera did Tom and Jerry. I'm a hundred percent sure. Hundred percent sure. I'm a hundred percent sure. As I would tell my wife, if I actually looked it up, that means it's a thousand percent sure. Because that okay. means I did it myself. All right, let's get ready for our technology fail of the week. Brought to you by Elite Executive Services. Let's start that now. We are out of time. Congratulations, you're a failure. Oh, I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right, speaking about this week's technology fail, it comes to us from HBO. That's right, the media company Home Box Office Entertainment and the chairman, Casey Bloys. The chief executive and chairman of HBO has admitted to tasking his staff with creating fake Twitter accounts to attack TV critics. Comes after Rolling Stone reported that Casey Blouse created a secret army to hit back at negative coverage. Mr. Blau apologized to the TV critics who were targeted at a recent press event. He Mr. said, Bloy? Mr. Bloys. Okay. That's what I said. Bloys. I got it. And it said during, during the period he was asked, uh, he was working from home and he was on an unhealthy amount of scrolling through Twitter. And I came up with a very dumb idea to vent my frustration, he said, at the HBO event in New York last week. In text exchanges, Rolling Stones reported there was one occasion when a TV critic tweeted about the HBO period drama Perry Mason. During uh, Dear Prestige TV, please find some way to communicate male trauma besides showing me a flashback to the hero's memories of Trench War. Mr. Bloys was seemingly annoyed, and according to text messages received by Rolling Stone, he sent the tweet to Kathleen McCaffrey, HBO's senior vice president of drama programming. I do apologize to people who were mentioned in the leaked text, he said. He added that he has now sends direct messages to journalists if he has a negative feedback to provide them instead of on fake accounts. We're going to head out to our last commercial break when we return. We have Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to us by Story Coffee and a possible Nathan Nugget. We'll see you after this break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, we're going to go right into uh, talking about deep fakes. What person would you have a problem seeing in a deep fake? Anybody. Okay, was well, there like a specific person that would really kind of irritate you? No, but th- I mean, this is all contextual stuff. 
Okay. All right. So if I go to a movie and I see somebody that's been de-aged, I'm fine with that because that's part, as long as it's part of the plot. Okay. Okay. I don't, I definitely don't want to see it appearing on like an ad for de- a dental thing, you know? Okay. But, you know, uh, what comes to mind when you ask who I would personally not want to see deep faked? Yeah. Just personally, you. You want to see me no, deep faked? I don't want to see you deep faked. Because you just like my original version of me mm, so yeah, much sure. that, so that, that, <laughs> that you just keep on replaying the videos I, at home of our, our no, show. No, I just so don't can... need you talking about lopper gangers and, oh, and wow. stuff in a wow. fake environment. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So wow. would you say that you would prefer for the person that give their consent to do it? As it should be. You know, this in is this sense? is a hard question. This is a hard question because we're talking about the a person's right to sell their rights. Right? Yep. So if I'm a, if I'm an if I'm a, an actor and they want to do deep fakes of me and I sell my rights to do so, which is a part of that Black Mirror episode I was talking about earlier, that's problematic. But it's my right to do so, right? So it's that's a very difficult. We're entering into we're entering into a place where the seams between reality and fantasy are becoming very blurred. Yeah. And it's going to create more problems than it solves. That's, well, was, that's my that's my big issue with it. AI is interesting here. I'll, I'll just say I, I AI worked on is a, very interesting, a film but, with somebody. I just worked on a film with somebody. Yeah. And we produced all the dialogue after we had filmed everything all by AI. Yeah. All could, of the AI... And you could tell. Okay, you could tell. You could tell a little bit. But you know what the comments that came back from that event were? That it was the only film that they could clearly hear the dialogue. So now all of a sudden, well, sure. if you if you fix that a little bit, now now would you go and watch a movie with fake AI dialogue so it can again, be clearer again, and change the it, stuff? It depends on the context. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to interact with an AI when I call my bank. Okay. Okay. I don't want to I want to interact Comcast, with a human. Ugh. Oh. I cannot stand the way they put these filters in 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 my way in order to get to what I need. Okay, and that's a standard practice of some of this stuff. But it it's just getting hurt. It's getting more and more difficult to bypass these things. You know, because I, I can AI see commercials the, in the I next five to AI ten years. In my normal job. Yeah, five. The next five to ten years, I can see every commercial that you watch be of some celebrity that was AI generated. Yeah. I'm right? sure because because with the deep fake technology you can get anybody you can get anybody to say anything that you want them to say. Yep. So if you have somebody who is is you know anti abortion, yep. You can get that person to flip flop on the on the deep fake and then it just confuses the message. People. Yeah. This is this is extremely problematic in the if not now, in the future, this well, is going to get worse and I'm worse. I'm glad you only want the original Nathan. I, I agree with you there. Yeah. yeah right. uh, all right, let's it's move all, on. It's all about you, buddy. That's right, that's right. Let's move on to our Nathan Nugget next. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, we reviewed the best laptops of 2023. Do you want a new laptop before the holiday? Well, you just purchased I, one. I just got one for, and, for my settlement. And, and you... Got one, it's the high end one, which we're going to talk about briefly here. But yeah. you got a high end individual. What if you want a new PC? You got to order it before Black Friday because all these deals will be gone. We're giving you a little bit of a heads start here. If you get it now, you can get it on that list. We're going to talk with the Dell XPS 13 as our best overall laptop. This Dell model has a 13 inch laptop to screen. It's popularized with a standard full size keyboard, it's lightweight, compact. It's essentially only 0.55 inches thick, so it's not even an inch thick, and it starts at just 200 or 2.59 pounds, not 200 pounds, 2.59 pounds. It's a great build quality with a keyboard that feels great to touch. Dell promises 12 hours battery life while streaming video, although it depends on what you're actually doing with that, so I don't know what type of video you'd be streaming at 12 for 12 hours, but I guess if you want to do a Lord of the Rings marathon, you could do it all on one battery charge. If you're a Linux fan... You're in luck because Dell offers a version of that PC that comes with Linux also. You know, you should have, in your in your time deal, you should have talked about the first portable compact that we looked at. Oh, we'll have to talk about it one that, next time. That was like, what, five pounds? No, 7.5. 7, 7. Yeah, 5 I had pounds. one of those. I had one of the compact luggables. Of course it was, you did. It, it was a, it was, I had it at it's Microsoft. Like this, it's, a like, it was like, it's like a... I took it on a trip. A freaking box. To, I took it on a trip once, and, then, and that sucker made it through checked baggage. 
and oh. still worked. All really? right, okay. All right, best budget laptop. You have $630 or less. Go to Best Buy right now. Look for the Acer Aspire Vero. It's essentially a 13th generation i5, not an i3 processor, which most of these sub $700 price tags come with. So this would be an i5. You get 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. It's a complete package capable of chewing through heavy workloads, except for gaming. Understand that this does not have a gaming resolution, but it does have a 15.6-inch display, and it's a full resolution of 1920 by 1080. So if you're watching a full uh, standard uh, DVD and full HD, you can watch it full screen without having to uh, minimize or uh, enlarge the actual graphic option itself. The next thing we have is the best gaming unit. You can choose one of two companies. User Choose a Dell... Oh, wow. A <laughs> Dell Alienware or a Lenovo Legion Pro. These costs vary from 3K to 5K per unit. How much does your unit cost? About 4000 4, uh, uh, So it depends. Again, if you spend five, six, even up to $7,000 on a gaming laptop, it's probably going to be the top of the line because you spent so much money and your graphics are good and all this type of deal. Yeah, I have mine's, never mine's bought pretty, a gaming, pretty sweet. gaming unit in my life. I've always bought a second or third. I know. You're always, that, that's, that's the weird thing about you is that you're all about technology, but you always buy it two years old. Well, that's, you know, that's a little bit cheaper that way. Well, all yeah. Right. That's a smart, that's a, that's, that's. A smart? That is that what to, you're that, saying? That, you, you don't want me to be dating. Faked, and he loved me being cheap. Sweet. No, he's smart. Cheap he side. said it too. His uh, all right, Frugal student laptop. Like if you want to purchase a laptop, the best available option out there is the MacBook Air M2. I have a M2 uh, uh, MacBook Pro in front of me right now that I use each and every day. Apple has transformed its airline. You should get it, Mark's opinion on that. Well, he doesn't <laughs> like Macs. All right, that's all right. It's a 13 inch <laughs> Apple laptop. The M2 is perfect, but. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can also look at the M1 13-inch MacBook Air, which is still plenty of performance at half the price of the M2. They just released the M3 stuff because I got an email today about that. All right. Well, that's nice. And now let's move to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. Yeah, your computer picks are like uh, your whiskey picks. Oh, wow. Wow. Gaming yeah. laptop for 3 to 5K. My daughter just got one. Works great. 1.2. Well, what would she buy? Asus. An Asus? Yeah. Okay. Not right. a separate okay. video card. Okay. What, what's, your, what's your video card? You, you it's a NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. 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 Thank you. So I've got, I mean, a, I'm here I've to got an English. RTX 4090. Well, okay. That's pretty good, right? That is pretty good. All right, well, tell us about the whiskey we're tasting. My, we, you know why prices are good. You know I'm a value shopper. I put a Dell in there. I put a Mac in there. Oh, my I wife put, has that Dell. It does not last 12 hours watching videos. That's what they promise. They promise, yeah. You but, promise a lot of things, too. Wow. You know, the, the Leaf <laughs> the Leaf promised 80 miles, and when they, got they like came 40. out, they only got like yeah. 20. So, yeah. you know, take all that with a grain of salt. That's okay. all Okay. not real world. All right. We are drinking, well, first of all, it's Hug a Person Day. So virtual hug oh, to so Greg so, McNabb oh, okay. and a real hug for Nathan. Oh, okay. All there right. we go. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. Wow. Wow. There we go. Mark's trying to make up for got, what he just said show about a little me. Love. I, okay, there you go. I don't know. I'm feeling I'm you want me, a little here, awkward. Here no, I don't want to. I'm not left out. I'm feeling <laughs> awkward. Go away. <laughs> all right. All right. We are drinking Sagamore Spirit, Cast Strength Rye, Barrel Select. It is from the... Pacific Northwest Bourbon Hounds called the Lost Rye of the West Coast. All right. Well, we're going to go with Mike first. Are you giving this a thumbs up or thumbs I'm down? I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Are you going to give it a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to tell you why. Why? This is not an out-of-the-bottle sip. As soon as I poured it out of the bottle and took my first sip, I was like, absolutely not. But as it sat there throughout the show and calmed down a little bit, the taste and the flavor really came out. So I'm going to I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. All right. Now, I'm always going to give stuff a thumbs up. I mean, it has to be really bad if He's, I don't like he, alcohol. He wants to give it a thumbs down. Right. You, I, should, you no. saw that face every time he took no, a No, I didn't. Not the last time. I just took it, a drink of it. It was just fine. So I'm actually going to give it a thumbs up. I would enjoy this sipping on out. But it does have a very strong bite. It's a, it's a real rye. It is a real rye. Yeah. And is this on your shelves at home? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I've been doing this blind against about six, seven other ryes, and it's it's one every time. Okay. I don't think I would have this on my shelf. I don't know for 60 a, or 70 bad, bucks. There's some other stuff you brought start. in that I think is much better that I personally like. Yeah, but. I find this with the seven years on the age on it. It's much more complex. There's a lot more to tease out in it. 
and you can just sit there for an hour and just sip on it and get each sip. You can get something a little different. All right. Well, for all of you out there, it was an honor to be the host of today's show. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you give us a five star review on whatever podcast service you may use. Also, for those that would like to get a part of the show, you can always click on our homepage and click on the Be A Caller and ask us a technology question. And we'll answer that on the air or talk to you in our callback system. Put in the chat or the comments what whiskeys you want us to review. There you go. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.